The upcoming omics logic program will be focused on transcriptomics. We will have almost three months to discuss the various aspects of RNA-seq data analysis and how this field of bioinformatics continues to evolve. This technique has been refined over the years and now is regularly used by many scientists to perform in-depth analysis of gene and isoform expression data. The year 2020 marks a 70-year mark since the discovery of structure and function of the DNA molecule. It took almost 50 years from that time to sequence the first human genome. But soon after, the technology developed at at that time started evolving rapidly. By 2015, the 1000 Genome Project brought a significant number of whole genome sequences to the research community and in 2018, over 100,000 whole genomes were already sequenced. Today, there is an ever-increasing number of genomic, transcriptomic, proteomic and metagenomic datasets available that describe subcellular processes with highly detailed digital data. The omics technologies are used to explore the roles, relationships, and actions of the various types of molecules that make up the cells of an organism. Many types of omics data can be generated using next-generation sequencing or what is also known as high-throughput sequencing. The data can show detailed information about genomic variants, epigenomic regulation, as well as gene and isoform expression. In this program, we will focus on one type of this kind of data, transcriptomics. This program will cover analysis of gene expression data with practical sessions and online tutorials. And anyone with a basic knowledge of cell and molecular biology will be able to conceptually understand, as well as practically apply standard data analysis tools to process, analyze, and interpret complex transcriptomics data. We will do so by leveraging regular online webinars, practical exercises, and online courses. These resources provide a broad and yet detailed overview of processing, statistical analysis, machine learning tools, and single-cell data analysis techniques. The course covers methods, expands on various terminologies, provides practical examples, and offers quizzes for self-evaluation. In addition to online courses, all participants will get access to hands-on exercises and datasets for practice. These can be completed without any coding using the analytical T-BioInfo platform that provides an interactive learning experience. The platform is color-coded to help establish a logical connection between theoretical aspects of data analysis methods and the practical steps needed to achieve a biologically interpretable result. Outputs are offered as tables, graphics, and interactive visualization helping users understand the way data can be used to study a biological phenomenon. A major topic in analysis of transcriptomic data is identification of differentially expressed genes and isoforms. While this is a straightforward approach that allows us to compare groups of samples under different conditions, several considerations around data preparation, normalization, and statistical adjustments are going to be expanded in this session. The online session will supplement information offered in the Transcriptomics 2 module that describes a number of statistical techniques typically used for simple and more complex approaches to finding differentially expressed genes. We will also discuss the properties of such datasets where thousands of observations about each sample contribute to noisy and often misleading data. Such aspect of log normal distribution and adjusted p-values by accounting for false discovery rate will be explained in detail. But the data offers more insight than one can find with standard techniques. Exploring data and understanding its statistical properties can help us spot technical variation that can have unwanted effects on our analysis. Some of the techniques are easy to use and can be done in Excel or any other type of table manipulation software. Others require a more streamlined approach. Many of these are available on the analytical platform that we will use. Once the data is standardized and prepared, we will learn about working with identified genes to arrive at a biological interpretation of results. Ultimately, it is not just about the data and how to prepare it, we want to gain a biological understanding of our project. Connecting the data elements with their biological significance will be a major focus of this program. Oftentimes, statistical tests do not capture the granularity of expression data in a given dataset. To learn about methods that can handle complexity that is typical for large omics datasets, we have to learn about additional methods of dimensionality reduction, data mining, and classification. For example, principal component analysis can help us understand variability between samples by analyzing all of our data features. We can use such dimensionality reduction techniques to get a better understanding into our dataset and visualize it so it's clear. As a result, we will be able to study genes, 
how they describe samples in our data set, and how this correlates with phenotypic information we have for biological or even clinical interpretation. But this is just one example of data mining techniques that can be used. In this online program, we will learn about other methods, including various approaches to clustering, network analysis, and others that can be used to mine rich transcriptomic data for meaningful patterns. For example, a defined pattern of expression can be linked to other players in a full regulatory network affected by a certain condition. We will learn about these types of situations and about dimensions, classes, and features, and all of this will help us understand how these machine learning algorithms can be applied to offer biologically interpretable results. Once we learn about these data mining techniques and explore the various patterns that seem to be meaningful, we can train a machine learning model that will help us classify new samples using patterns in the data. In the part of the program, we will learn about discriminant analysis classification, including linear discriminant analysis, support vector machines, and decision trees. We will also learn about the impact of feature selection on interpretation of a condition sampled from various datasets. To do that, we will cover decision trees and random forests to work with various gene sets for classification. These methods are not always used in smaller research projects, however, they have an important application in pharmaceutical R&D as well as many clinical applications. Mastering these methods will help you understand biomarker discovery, patient stratification, and other issues that require predictive modeling and feature selection. But ultimately, we want to connect the data with biology. How can these genes, isoforms, or their expression levels help explain the mechanism of action, explain the process of deregulation of vital cellular pathways, or provide indication that a gene or protein can be considered as a target for a drug? Here we will learn about various data sets that are used to annotate our data and link it to functional properties found in a gene ontology or pathway. For example, we will learn to utilize gene set enrichment analysis to find pathways or gene sets enriched with up or down regulated genes of interest. Finally, we will conclude the program speaking about single cell transcriptomics. Emerging since 2009, this is a recent technology that continues to evolve and diversify. Single cell transcriptomics help identify all messenger RNAs present in a single cell. Unlike bulk RNA-seq profiling, where sequencing libraries are generated from thousands of cells, single cell RNA-seq technologies isolate single cells and generate cell-specific sequencing libraries, marking RNA content with a cell-specific molecular barcode. This amount of sparse data calls for additional processing steps. These include special normalization approaches, filtering, and quality control because data can be informative but also very noisy. Finally, each participant will have the opportunity to study how these techniques are applied in the context of a real project. We prepared a number of various examples that you can pick from, ranging from biomedical to agrobiological studies. Many of our past participants had a chance to present their analysis results in front of their classmates, or even conference poster sessions and workshops. We also receive regular feedback about these programs, and the materials we collect have been reviewed by faculty and students from top U.S. and international universities. This kind of feedback demonstrates that the learning will be effective and even transformational for many of you joining this program. We welcome you to join this exciting program today. Register and share this information with friends and colleagues. We're looking forward to seeing you there.